Hello. So we have seen how analog multipliers can be used in amplitude modulation. And now we're going to take a closer look at how that is achieved. Uh, one particular amplitude modulation scheme that we're going to be looking at is that of balanced modulation, uh, which is another, another form of saying double sideband suppressed carrier or DSB-SC modulation. It's one form of amplitude modulation, uh, which suppresses the carrier frequency, as we shall see. Uh, so I have my analog multiplier, I have my carrier signal and my modulating signal as the inputs, and my output is going to be proportional to the product of the two. So I can write, um, assuming the simple case of sinusoidal signals, I can write my carrier signal, VC, in the form VCP, some amplitude, times the sine of 2 pi FC, my carrier frequency, times T, and my modulating signal as VM equals VMP, my peak value or amplitude of the modulating signal, times the sine of 2 pi F sub M, the frequency of the modulating signal times T. And again, I know my output voltage is going to be equal to or proportional to the product of the two with that proportionality constant being K. So K times VC times VM. And this is going to be equal to K times VCP times VMP times sine of 2 pi FC times T times sine of 2 pi fm times t. So I'm basically just multiplying the two uh, signals written above. And now notice that I have uh, a product of signs here, and so I'm going to use my trigonometric expression, I'll put it in blue, that sine of a times sine of b is equal to 1 half times cosine of a minus b minus cosine of a plus b. And so if I use a trigonometric relationship, I can rewrite my output voltage v out as uh, k times vcp times vmp divided by 2, uh, because I have the 1 half there, so maybe I can just say k halves times v. Cp times Vmp uh, times the cosine of 2 pi Fc minus Fm times T, the difference uh, of the frequencies minus cosine of 2 pi Fc plus Fm times T. And so notice that what I have um, is no longer any of the frequency components of the original signals, FC and FM, but rather I have two sidebands, uh, one component uh, with the difference in frequencies, so one term with the uh, difference in carrier and modulating frequencies, and one which is the sum term. Those are referred to as the sidebands. And we're going to take a, a closer look at what that looks like with a specific example. So here I have a specific example of a balance modulation with a double sideband suppressed carrier modulation scheme. Uh, and I've expressed my carrier signal and my modulating signal. They are the same as before, except I've made them now, both of them signals with uh, five volts of amplitude. And in the case of my carrier signal, I have a frequency of 10 kilohertz. And in the case of my modulating signal, a frequency of one kilohertz. Uh, so my output voltage is going to be equal to um, the product of the two signals times uh, the proportionality constant or the scaling factor from the multiplier, which I've written up there on top of the multiplier is uh, one tenth of a volt. So my output voltage is then going to be equal to 5 times 5 divided by 10, or 25 divided by 10. 
times the sine of 2 pi 10,000 t times the sine of 2 pi 1,000 t. First one is carrier frequency, the second one is modulating or information signal frequency. Um, so I can now apply, again, I have a product of two signs, just like I did before. And so I can apply my trigonometric identity, sine of A, sine of B, is equal to one half times cosine of A minus B minus cosine of A plus B. And if I apply that, I can rewrite my output voltage as um, 25 over 10 is 2.5, so 2.5 divided by 2 because of the one half times the cosine of um, I think I'm gonna open another bracket there so this times the cosine of 2 pi times 10,000 minus 1,000 times t minus the cosine of 2 pi 10,000 plus 1,000 times t. And so I can further simplify this as uh, 1.25 times the cosine of 2 pi times 9,000 times t minus 1.25 times the cosine of 2 pi times 11,000 times t. And so again, notice that I have uh, my sidebands here uh, at the, the uh, difference frequency and the sum frequency. Those are my two sidelines. If I were to represent what I have here, I could do a frequency domain plot where this is my frequency in kilohertz. And these are my inputs to the analog multiplier. And I have uh, two components in this simple case. Uh, they will just be straight lines and those are perfect sinusoids in both cases of a single frequency. So this will be at uh, one kilohertz, that will be my Vm, and at 10 kilohertz, that will be my Vc, my carrier. And what I get at the output, this is my output, this is my frequency in kilohertz, and notice that my two components are sitting at 9 and 11 kilohertz, and those will be my output signals, um, and uh, the amplitude in this case is 125, so they should be smaller than my original input signals, and so here they are. I'm going to draw this in blue. But again, notice that uh, you only have those sidebands, there is no frequency component um, at the location of the original carrier frequency, and that's the name uh, suppressed carrier and double sideband is because um, you have the two the two sidebands the components on both sides uh, centered around the carrier frequency. Again, notice that in uh, this type of modulation scheme, what we are doing is we are shifting um, our our information signal, which is the modulating signal. It's at a very low frequency, and for example, for transmission over long distances. Uh, that is impractical because it will give a uh, higher loss than a high frequency signal, plus we will need a very long antenna to pick that up, and so for uh, practicality reasons we want to be able to, um, uh, for transmission purposes, to convert the signal to a high frequency signal, and we achieve that by performing amplitude modulation. So we take a carrier signal that is of a high frequency, and uh, via our amplitude modulation scheme we are able to combine the carrier with the modulating signal so that now we have a high frequency signal which contains the information from the modulating signal with the idea of um, after transmission being able to extract that information signal back out. Um, there are other modulation schemes, this is not the only one, 
uh, a very close one to the balanced modulation scheme will be the standard AM modulation scheme, uh, which is also referred to as double sideband with carrier. And so we're going to see that next, how it differs from this one. So here we're going to take a look at the standard AM modulation scheme, which is um, slightly different from the balance modulation, in that in the balance modulation, we suppress the carrier frequency. And this one is a double sideband with carrier. So we're going to see how it is different in terms of implementation. Uh, notice that I have a very similar configuration to what I had before, uh, where I have my two input signals, my uh, carrier signal and my modulating signal being applied to the input of a multiplier. But notice that I am adding a DC component to my modulating signal. And, um, and so my carrier signal will be the same as before for the purposes of this example. Amplitude of 5 volts, uh, frequency of 10 kilohertz. My modulating signal will be a sinusoid with amplitude 5 volts and frequency 1 kilohertz. And my DC signal that I'm adding to the, my modulating signal it's just a, a 5 volts uh, DC signal. So let's take a look at um, what happens to my output voltage, which is going to be equal to uh, my K is 1 tenth, my K factor from the multiplier. So this is going to be 1 tenth of 5. Um, sine of 2 pi 10,000 t times 5 plus 5 times the sine of 2 pi 1000 t. So notice how we have added a DC component 5 to our modulating signal now. And so I'm going to first uh, 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 solve that expression, expand that expression. And so I'm going to have uh, 25 divided by 10 or 2.5. times the sine of 2 pi 10,000 t plus and uh, 25 divided by 10 or 2.5 times the sine of 2 pi 10,000 t times the sine of 2 pi 1,000 t. And again I have a uh, a product of two signs here, which I'm going to um, expand by using my trigonometric identity, just as I did before, sine of A sine of B equals one half cosine of A minus B minus cosine of A plus B. And so my V out is going to be 2.5 times the sine of 2 pi 10,000 T plus 2.5, and now I'm doing my conversion, so I need to divide that by 2. So plus 1.25 times the cosine of uh, 2 pi, and this is going to be the difference, 10,000 minus 1,000, so 9,000 t, and uh, minus 1.25 times the cosine of 2 pi, 11,000 T. I guess I have to run it into the next line. I notice then that I have now three frequency components in my um, output signal. I have my original carrier signal. This is into my AM modulated signal. Uh, my original carrier frequency, uh, the difference between carrier and modulating frequency and the sum between carrier and modulating frequency. So I have uh, something at the carrier frequency and then still the two side bands around the carrier frequency. Or if we were to represent it in our frequency domain plot, this is our frequency in kilohertz and this is my input. Again, I have my components at the input of my multiplier. They're the same as uh, before, my modulating signal at 1 kilohertz, my carry signal at 10 kilohertz, but now I also have a DC component at zero, at a frequency of zero. 
what I get at my output this is my frequency in kilohertz and I get something so a component of 10 and then the difference is 9 and the sum is 11 so I get those three components uh, these ones have a slightly smaller amplitude and that one a little bit more amplitude. So this is what I get. So again, an AM modulation scheme with a carrier, because I have the carrier signal and the two sidebands. So another modulating scheme. Next, we're going to take a look at a circuit that can implement both the balance modulation scheme and the standard AM modulation scheme. Thank you.